What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. I've gotten so many comments on my Meshtastic solar build video with people wanting to buy a complete ready to go kits from me but I just don't have the time to do that and I get it not everyone has the tools or the time to build one of my solar builds but for those of you out there like that I have some good news. There's finally a viable solution out there from Rack Wireless that doesn't require all the construction of my solar build and that's what we're going to cover in today's video so join me as we take a look. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Today's video is sponsored by Rockland Technologies. With a great selection of mesh-tastic capable devices and antennas, they've been my go-to store for these and I highly recommend them. We got our start with solar mesh-tastic nodes probably about a year and a half ago now with this little box we have here which I believe is Rack's first solar enclosure which you've probably seen in some of our earlier videos. While it did last a while, the little solar panel struggled to keep up and with enough cloudy days it would eventually require taking down to charge it back up. This is what led us to develop version 1 of our solar node with the large panel many of you have probably seen on the channel here. Rack Wireless came out with another enclosure with a bigger panel, but we didn't bother picking one up to test as it didn't look big enough to support 24-7 operation and saw some reviews confirming this. Plus the solar build was working so well there wasn't really a need to. A lot of you were looking for a more turnkey solution though and we noticed that Rack Wireless recently came out with a new solar enclosure that finally looked like it had a panel big enough to support 24-7 operation and avoid having to take it down. I picked one up to test and I can confirm that it's able to keep up and will be great option for those of you who don't have the tools or the time to build one of my solar nodes. While there is some assembly required, it's really easy to set up and only requires a screwdriver. As far as the performance of the solar panel is concerned, it performed much better than I expected. I made the mistake of purchasing the version of this enclosure that doesn't include an antenna connector because I intended on drilling my own hole and putting in an end connector and installing an antenna directly on top of the enclosure like I've done on many of my previous solar builds. There's one problem going that route though because the enclosure has a bit of an angle on the top, bottom, and sides which means that the antenna is also angled. To remedy this I added some spacers to the mounting hardware to angle it down a bit more to make the antenna more level. Doing that means that the solar panel will be angled down however and if you're going to angle a solar panel you want to angle it up for more sun. Still I threw it up on the pole to test and see how it would do. I tested on a cloudy day and with the combination of being cloudy and the panel being angled down I wasn't expecting to see much of a charge if any. It remained cloudy all day and much to my surprise it looked like I could expect to see at least 10 to 15 percent charge throughout a cloudy day if not more. Even with the panel being angled down that's very impressive and kudos to Rack Wireless for having these available now. But as mentioned earlier, we're looking for something that is more of a turnkey solution that won't require users having to drill holes or anything and just have some minor assembly to get it up and running. For that, Rack has a version of this enclosure with an RP-SMA connector on it, which is what I'm now recommending for users that just want something they can easily put together and throw up on a pole. The good folks at Rockland sent me the version of this enclosure with the RPSMA connector and a short, very low loss LMR400 equivalent cable with an RPSMA and end connector to run from the enclosure to an antenna. I'm using one of their antennas as well, but this was purchased by me. This version of the enclosure also has a 5 pin M8 connector on it, but this isn't necessary for basic use cases if you just want to get a solar node up and running. You'll still need to install this connector, however, to keep the enclosure waterproof. So let's take a look at what comes with the enclosure. We have the front cover, which houses the solar panel, cables, a bag of screws, a rubber gasket for waterproofing, and a mounting plate with holes for mounting a wide range of whiz blocks. The included cables are going to be a cable with an M8 connector for connecting from the outside of the enclosure and an M8 connector with wires for connecting to the internals depending on your project. As mentioned earlier this isn't needed to run your mesh-tastic system and you'll just be installing this for waterproofing so don't be put off by all the bare wires. You'll just be tucking these out of the way. 
For those of you that do want to have this connector capability, I'll be covering this in a later video. The other included cable is an RP-SMA to IPEX pigtail. So that's what comes with the enclosure itself. You'll just need a few more items for the build. You'll need a battery and I'm using one of these flat pack batteries and what's nice about these is most of them have the overcharge and over discharge protection built into them which is what this little circuit board on them is for. Next you'll need a way to mount it like this pole mounting kit that I'm using if mounting to a pole or a mounting kit for mounting to the side of something like a building. Then you'll just need the cable that goes from the enclosure's RPSMA connector to the antenna's end connector, and then finally a antenna. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the whiz block, which is essentially the radio for the system. And I'll have the links to everything you need to get up and running in the video description below. The next video will be a two-part video. First part's going to go over the basic installation for users who just want a simple setup that they can quickly get installed. And the second part of the video will be for those who don't mind doing a bit of soldering and want to utilize the 5-pin M8 connector. That'll do it for this video going over this great new solar option for Meshtastic, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss out on the upcoming video going over the setup and installation of this solar build. Thank you all and have a good one. <laughs>